Hello, I am Chaplain Sarah Chavari. Thank you for joining me to look at another component of resiliency. And tonight's component is self-awareness. So resiliency is this ability to bounce back. And there are several pieces to it. Understanding what we do and why we do it, what our thoughts are, is a large part of resiliency. These are difficult times we are in, and thank you so much to all of our staff, frontline staff, staff at the corporate office, everyone who is working to continue to bring just the best possible care to our residents and tenants. This is a hard time when maybe there's some grief for you as you miss how you used to be able to interact with family members or with residents, or maybe there's grief in how you used to be able to interact with coworkers. And so wherever you come, as you're watching this video tonight, uh, as I'm recording it in the evening, just be mindful that uh, self-awareness is one piece of resiliency and it works with these other pieces we've been looking at, one of which is self-care. And so during this time of COVID-19, it's very important for us, even if it feels like we don't have time, it's very important for us to continue to take care of ourselves so that we can continue to take good, oops, so we can continue to take good care of our residents. Oh. All right, so um, let's just continue in then. Again, here are the uh, domains of resiliency that we are using. This is one model. It comes from the Bounce Back Project. Uh, again, notice the uh, beach ball in the corner that represents a slide that we are using from the Bounce Back Project. There are several different models around resiliency. Um, and, and so this is one, and you could find others also. Okay, so as we, as we think about self-awareness, I wanna start with this uh, Bible passage from Philippians and St. Paul writes, finally brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about such things. So these are beautiful words and a beautiful calling um, to really focus our mind on the things that give life, the things that are godly, the things that um, draw us into awe or wonder at God's goodness, things that draw us into the calmness uh, that's connected to faith for many people. Of course, the challenge is. Uh, in times of stress and in times of busyness, like what we're in right now, uh, we can find ourselves being pulled out of that in our thinking. And so we're going to dig into that a little bit tonight. How does it happen? Why does it happen? And what can we do about it? Okay, so our brains, um, when we're really stressed, our brains narrow the focus so that it's kind of like laser focus in. Um, and when we are feeling less stress or less negativity, even when we're feeling more positive, our brain opens up and we see lots of possibilities. We're able to be more creative. We're able to be calmer because we're not forced into just an either or kind of thinking. So, Let's develop some critical awareness to our thoughts and what can be informing them when we might find ourselves thinking in ways that um, aren't noble or aren't true and don't serve us well and certainly don't serve our colleagues or our residents to the best of our abilities. So these are uh, some examples that might sound familiar to you. Uh, some of them certainly sound familiar to me. You know, we're all in this together, learning and growing. So false assumptions and limiting beliefs. Um, this information comes from my work as a coach. So I'm a professionally uh, certified coach. Got, I've gone through 125 hours of training with this and then 500 
hours of practice to uh, to become a PCC level coach. And one of the things we studied was false assumptions and limiting beliefs. So a false assumption is something we simply assume, as the word says, assume to be true or something we assume is certain to happen. And a limiting belief is something we believe to be true that limits our options. Uh, and it holds us back and it keeps us stuck. So uh, I would encourage you to kind of jot down for yourself which of these uh, you might find in your own life. And let me say just a quick word about how come these are so dangerous. When limiting beliefs and false assumptions occupy our thoughts, um, we have increased cortisol levels, which are caused by stress. Um, there's an increase in misunderstandings with other people. We have more worry. We miss opportunities. Um, more self-doubt is present. And the construction of barriers that aren't really there can occur. The good news is all along the way with resiliency is we can learn to catch ourselves when we have some of these false assumptions. And then we can uh, hit pause and help our brains calm down. So overgeneralization is our first one. This is like the idea of all, um, it's like you just clump everything kind of together using words like I'll never get that promotion or she always does that, okay? All or nothing thinking, seeing things in black and white, right or wrong, either or, binary. Um, and all or nothing thinking doesn't leave anything in between. It's essentially this idea that if I'm not perfect, if the situation isn't perfect, then it must be the other extreme. So if it's not perfect, then the whole thing must be a failure. Um, it, thoughts that demonstrate all or nothing thinking would be, um, there's no point in playing if I'm not 100% in shape, or I didn't finish writing that paper, so it was a complete waste of time. Uh, cat catastrophizing. So I think an example of catastrophizing is just projecting out, um, I'm going to sleep, more dramatically about something. So seeing things as dramatically more or less important than they actually are. Um, so it could be something like, I forgot that email. That means my boss won't trust me again. I won't get... Um, a raise and my life will fall apart. Um, our, I, I know um, our daughter is catastrophizing when she worries about you know, um, her Spanish grade and she's not gonna get into college because of her Spanish grade and she's in seventh grade. So catastrophizing going on, yeah. Shoulds, oughts, have tos. Um, these aren't related to clinical compliance. Of course, we always need to be in compliance with how we deliver care, but these are when we feel like I should do something, but we don't have a lot of energy behind it. Uh, and it could simply be something that's self-imposed, like I should lose a bunch of weight before I go to that high school class reunion. So who's telling you you should lose a bunch of weight? Is it, is it yourself? Um, so then if that's the case, kind of check that should and get a little bit more curious. Or maybe it's, oh, I really ought to uh, clean out my basement this weekend. And you have no energy for it. And what you'd love to do this weekend is to get out and garden or, you know, just to get some well-earned rest. But it's this relentless kind of taskmaster. I should do this. I need to be doing that. I have to. I always have to be producing more. Uh, labeling or name calling. Uh, this is for ourselves or for somebody else. You know, if you find in your thinking, you're saying unkind things, um, you're saying to yourself, what an idiot, or I'm so stupid. Um, that would be something just to catch. And we'll, we'll give you a few suggestions in a moment here. Okay, mind reading. If you watch a movie with me, I will do this through the whole thing. And then you'll probably move five seats away from me. So 
I love to guess what the next line in a movie is going to be, right? Like, you know, if you're watching a movie and surgery is going on, I'll be the one who says, and then he, he like strikes an artery and there's blood everywhere. And then that happens. And I'm like, yes, yeah, see, I told you. And I was watching a movie with our daughter oh, a few weeks ago. And she's like, mom, I'm not going to keep watching movies with you if you keep doing that. And my husband's like, yeah, you do that with me too. And I'm like, okay, it's time for me to develop new habits. So I kept working on it. And then I'd, I'd jump in and I'd do it like the next night. And then I'd say, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So I was actually talking more in trying to correct the behavior, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting better. So it's um, label, uh, mind reading is just thinking that you know what somebody else is thinking or what someone else is going to say. And you really, you know, we really don't know those things. The same is, is true with fortune telling. We're making negative predictions about what the future will be without actually any evidence or without actually anything that's factual to support it. So um, it could be something like, um, you know, I can't get this project finished and that means I'm going to be stuck here forever. Or it could be, no one will understand. I won't be invited to come back to this group of friends again. So it's, it's, a, it's similar to catastrophizing or all or nothing thinking, which moves us into discounting the positive. So um, I grew up in a culture that was so big on this. You know, it was almost like, if we said anything was positive, it was like inviting disaster to come. And so discounting the positive would, would be, let's say you made a really nice meal and you, um, you burned, you know, you burned um, the Brussels sprouts. Now, some people might be like, yay, now we don't have to eat them. But um, if people really wanted the Brussels sprouts, um, then your thought might be the whole evening was wrecked, right? Like, you don't notice that people laughed and people stayed a long time. You're focused on the one thing that went wrong. Okay, then blaming yourself and blaming others. Um, blame is the discharge of pain or anger. So uh, when we want to get rid of uncomfortable, hard emotions, we might want to blame someone else. Um, and we even will blame ourselves just to give kind of that comfort of at least we can get rid of this, this uncertainty or this vulnerability, this uncomfortable feeling. Um, and it could even be things like, oh, if only I hadn't said this and they wouldn't do that. You know, if you ever go over in your mind conversations that have happened and, and you think, oh, I should have said this. Um, if only I was younger, if only I was older, X, Y, or Z would happen. So it's um, find yourself thinking that way again, catch it. And then emotional reasoning. This is, I think, kind of the sleeper of all of these, meaning it's, it's very active in our lives, but it's not super easy to recognize and see. So let me walk you through it. We have a strong emotion and we want to understand why we feel anxious or why we feel afraid. Um, and so we come up with a reason, an explanation to wrap around that hard emotion. But it, again, it's not necessarily factual. It's not necessarily true. Um, an example might be, I feel really, really guilty. And you just are not really sure why you feel really guilty. And so your thought then becomes, I must have done something wrong. Um, or you feel really, really um, afraid. And you can look around and you can know that everything is okay, I'm okay, but your thought might become um, something bad is going to happen to try to make sense of that hard emotion. Uh, and then the final one, mental filter, dwelling on or allowing one negative detail or fact to spoil our whole experience, to spoil all the joy, you know, all of the happiness. So you plan a great, um, 
you know, special day for somebody in your life and it doesn't go exactly how you wanted it to, um, you really let one detail take center stage. It's very similar to discounting the positive. Now, take a look at these and are there ones that you think, oh yeah, that's mine. Okay, so grab that one because we're gonna pull it forward into uh, self-awareness and to keep working with it this week. Okay, so now we have an idea of what some of these false assumptions and limiting beliefs are. Now let's get curious. Let's sleuth out what is happening here. So first step, self-awareness. Know what's going on. All you've gotta do is know, I've got some really hard emotions. Let's get curious about it, okay? Um, rather than pushing it away or pretending it's not there, first step, just recognize and then get curious. You can ask yourself some additional questions. Is that really true? Is it really true that the burnt Brussels sprouts really wrecked the whole evening? No, no, that's actually not true. Um, or you could ask a question like, when has this not been true? Well, I forgot to send an email a few weeks ago and I didn't lose my job over that, so I'm probably not gonna lose my job over this mistake, okay? Um, what else am I missing? What else do I need to know? So um, if a friend doesn't return, oh, and this, this is like the worst one, right? You're texting someone and then you get the dot, 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 and then like there's no message. They don't respond and you might think, oh my gosh, what's going on, are they mad? Um, why aren't they getting back to me? And we can make up a whole story, right? Put it through that mental filter. So then the question simply is, what else do I need to know? Okay, well, I wonder what else they might have been up to. Maybe they're picking their kids up. Uh, maybe they're helping an elderly parent. You know, you, you, you don't know um, what the whole context could be. So it's just hitting pause and getting curious. Dr. Brené Brown has this great quote, which um, actually comes from her husband, who's a pediatrician, and Steve is his name, and, he, and Brene talks about him as being very, very calm all of the time. That's kind of his superpower, and he um, says, when you're nervous and you're anxious, um, do you have enough information to freak out, and will freaking out help? And, you know, Renee's like, of course, the answer always is no and no. So it's just about getting more curious. So when we've got to calm ourselves down, so again, our brain can expand, prefrontal cortex can work to give us lots of ideas, lots of ways forward, comes back to that breath. It is truly like this gift from God that we can just use in the moment to get grounded again five deep breaths. Um, wherever we, we are, Dr. Rosie uh, talks about in some of his presentations, uh, just will get us anchored in again. So give yourself permission to feel without getting stuck in the hard emotion. It goes back to that very first video. Practice mindfulness and practice self-compassion. So, so much of this is simply about being aware. Aware of my thoughts, aware of how they're impacting my body, and then asking myself these questions. Is this true? What else do I need to know? It's okay to have a really big, hard emotion. It is okay to be really stressed and scared. Um, so let's, let's sit with that emotion. Um, and we can always bring those hard emotions to God in prayer and, um, and bring our needs to the Lord and, and seek his comfort and guidance because he's with us in all of this. All right, a final quote for us, uh, thinking about self-awareness is real freedom is the ability to pause between stimulus and response and in that pause, choose. Choose what our next action, what our next step will be. So thank you for watching and my encouragement this uh, week for resiliency would be to think about, observe kind of how you're functioning and which of these false assumptions and limiting beliefs readily come for you. And then what happens when you hit pause, you take a breath, 
and you get curious. What else could you find out and then get back on track to living um, into your own personal values and living our mission together? All right, thanks everybody.